Hi, I'm Vin with Boris FX, and in this quick tutorial, I'm going to combine BCC Title Studio with Particle Emitter 3D to create some really electric lower thirds. Now, I previously looked at Particle Emitter 3D in my Running with the Flash tutorial, and in that I covered a lot of the basics of the filter. We'll still cover the basic emitter and particle properties, but definitely take a look at that tutorial when you get a chance. For this tutorial, we're going to focus on fractal noise and the spawn particles parameter. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects, and I'm going to begin by creating a new 1920 by 1080 composition. We'll be dealing with pre-comps a lot in this project, so I'm going to be naming this one Particles. The length of the comp will be determined by your project needs, but for this tutorial, I'm going to go with about 5 seconds. Next, I'll create a new solid and name it Energy Ribbon. If we look at the original animation, I can see that we have this solid stream of energy which stands out over the smaller dust particles. I'm going to create each of these individually, so to begin with, let's focus on the energy ribbon. The first thing I want to do is go to my particles group and select Particle Emitter 3D. I'm going to drag that right onto my solid. Now right out of the gate we have some particles flying towards the camera. What I want to do is tweak things so that they create a solid line. To do that, I'm going to open up my emitter group. Here we have all the settings that control the basic shape and flow of the particles. The first thing I want to do is change the direction of my particles from random to right. And this will get them flowing in the direction that I want. By adjusting the birth rate and particle speed, I can increase the number of particles per second and how fast they fly out of the emitter. I can also drop the spread percentage to pull them all together into a single straight line. And of course, since we're dealing with a lower third, let's just move the emitter to the lower left. I can use either the on-screen widget or the position XY parameter. Now that's looking pretty good, but at the moment the line goes all the way across the screen. I want my particles to die out about two-thirds of the way across. To do this, I'm going to tweak the particle lifespan a bit. The smaller the lifespan, the shorter my lower third will be. Once that's done, I'm going to close out my emitter group and go to the particle group to change the way the particles look. For now, let's just shrink the size down and change the color. Now I can either select a solid color or a gradient. I can also adjust the opacity and even create an opacity graph. There are lots of cool effects that you can make here, so definitely poke around and experiment, but for now, I'm just going to select the color chip and select a light blue. To create the organic electric look that we see here, I want to go to the Fractal Field group. Here, I can adjust the frequency and movement to create organic noise. To recreate the look of my electric ribbon, I want to increase the movement and size of the noise. Now, if I want to speed up the motion and complexity of the noise, I can adjust the noise frequency a bit. So this looks good. There's a nice organic look to it and it animates on nicely. To animate off, all I need to do is move my CTI to about the 3 second mark and set a position XY keyframe. I'll then move to the last frame and reposition the X value so that the ribbon is now off screen. With that done, let's go to the Film Style category in my Effects and Preset and select the Fast Film Glow. Now normally when I'm working with presets, I'd recommend using the FX Browser to preview them. But since we've applied this to a solid, there isn't much to look at. So what I can do is select the drop-down menu, and from here I have a list of all the presets that ship with BCC10. I'm going to select Default Stronger and increase my glow intensity a little bit. I can also decrease my glow radius to restrict the glow firmly to the energy ribbon. Subtlety is key here, so I'm not going to crank any of these parameters too high or too low, or it won't look right. If I play that back, that's starting to look pretty good. Alright, next I want to duplicate my energy ribbon layer. This will allow me to create the particles that fly off the ribbon without having to completely recreate the effect from scratch. Because we're going to be dealing with even more random particles in a bit, I'm going to delete the fast film glow from this new layer. I'll explain why in a little bit, but with that done, let's rename it Spawn Particles. In the Particle Emitter 3D effect, I'm going to open up the Spawn Particles group. Basically, this category allows me to turn individual particles into emitters to create some pretty cool effects. I'll enable the Spawn Particles and select Continuously. What you'll see when this is enabled is that a few green particles float about the scene. We'll change the color later, but for now let's leave it green so that they stand out. I want to change my shape to image collection and increase the rate a little. As I do, I can see that I'm getting these little green spikes growing out of my energy stream, and if I play it back, they would kind of look like a bunch of little tiny Jedi fighting. If I crank the rate random setting, this will alter the rate at which the various particles generate, separating them and spreading them out. But since the main rate parameter remains constant, they're going to stick to the original energy stream, inheriting its motion and giving me this really cool plasma effect. Now I'm going to leave that at 100 since I like the way it looks, but feel free to experiment. As with the main emitter settings, I can adjust the life to increase the amount of time in which they are on screen. 
Spawn velocity is another cool parameter that will increase the distance between them and the emitter. By increasing this, I can spread them out further to create a nice field of particles that follow the motion of the original ribbon. The life random parameter will create some randomness in the lifespan of the particles, and this will cause some of the particles to die out sooner than others, giving it a more realistic and organic look. By switching the inherit velocity mode to velocity at spawn time, our new particles will inherit their initial velocity from the original energy stream. This way they don't move at all the same rate. I can also change the acceleration type to explosive so the particles burst out of the stream as opposed to simply flowing out in a steady stream. Now one other thing I can do is increase the size randomness all the way. Much like with the life random parameter, this will create the illusion of depth as some particles will be larger than others. Feel free to experiment with the various settings to match the look of your project. Lastly, let's select that color chip and change it to a light blue. With that done, things are looking pretty good. Now to finish off the energy ribbon, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer at the top of my stack and add fast film glow to it. By adding it here instead of on the spawn particles layer, it will composite with the entire effect instead of just the layer. This will help boost the intensity of the ribbon without washing it out in the glow from the particles. As before, I'll set my preset to default stronger and maybe tweak that intensity upwards a bit. Okay, here's where things get interesting. I'm going to select all three layers and go up to the layer menu and select Precompose. Let's call it Particle Stream and move all attributes to a new composition. With that done, I'll drop some stock footage of a galaxy onto the bottom of my stack. Then I'll select both layers and once again precompose them, moving everything to a new comp which we'll call Video Composite. This isn't strictly necessary, but I'll show you in a moment why this makes things a bit easier. For now, take the Video Composite layer and duplicate it. I'm going to rename it Title Studio. Okay, before we jump into that layer, let's look at the original Video Composite layer. I want to go to the Lights unit in my Effects and Presets and select Lens Flare 3D. Because we pre-composed this layer earlier, I can open up my FX browser and select a preset and the full composited video can be previewed. Feel free to select any flare that you think works best, but to reproduce my project, I'm going to select Light Beam and hit Apply. Now with a little bit of adjusting, I'll position my flare right on top of my energy stream. It may help to move the CTI forward a bit so I can line it up exactly. Now what I want to do is have this flare do its thing as the particles stream out. To do this, I'm going to move my CTI to around 15 frames. Here, I'll set a keyframe for the global scale to zero. Then I'll move forward a bit to around the two second mark and set another keyframe with the global scale value of one. I can then repeat the process at around the four second mark by adding a keyframe with the same value and then moving forward about 15 frames and setting a final keyframe for zero. If I need to tweak the in and out points, I can just grab the keyframe and reposition them so that the flare ignites as the particles stream in and then fades as they stream out. Something else I can do is to animate the position of the flare so that it appears to be carried along by the particle stream. To do that, I can go to my light parameter and select built in. I can then set a keyframe for the position XY when my flare first begins to appear and then scrub forward and set another keyframe at the point it fades out. I can nudge the position X value a little to animate some movement. Lastly, I'm going to go through the various parameters and turn everything off except for glow, stripe, and chromatic aberration. It's up to you if you want to leave the other parameters on, but for me, it's all about simplicity. Okay, now that our particle stream is done, let's go back to the Effects and Presets panel. In my 3D Objects unit, I'm going to select Title Studio and drag that right onto my Title Studio layer. When I launch Title Studio's interface, I can set my composite window to background. Since we've already duplicated the precomposed layer earlier, I can easily see my energy ribbon. It won't have the lens flare since that's on a different layer, but this is enough to get us where we need to be. I'm going to start by deleting the placeholder text and creating a new flat text from this menu. When I do, I get access to my text generator window and I can change it to anything, for example, intergalactic particles. As with all text, I can select my font and adjust the size, leading, and kerning. I can also select this color box and choose from either a solid color or a gradient. Let's select gradient and launch the editor to manually adjust the coloring. I can change the start color, end color, repetitions, etc. But there's also another option. If I want, I can go up to the window menu and select gradient styles. Here I can select from any number of saved presets from solids to fades to pastels to brick and stone. Making sure that my text is selected, I'm going to select the blue stone preset. With that done, let's position it. 
Now when moving text, always remember to make sure that the Auto Animate button is toggled off. When it's toggled on in red, any changes we make will create keyframes which can cause our text to animate incorrectly if not careful. So, I'm going to toggle it off and move my text right over that particle stream. I can always go back and fine-tune my adjustments to the text, size, and other styles if need be. Now here's the thing, I don't want my text to be visible until I get to a certain point in the animation, so to save myself the trouble of keyframing opacity and all that, I'm going to go and grab this track here and trim it to the point I want. Next, I'll select the Material track and open up the Type On tab. At the very first keyframe for my text, I'll set the Type On to Linear and drop it to zero. Then I'll scrub forward about a second, create a new keyframe, and set it to 100. If I adjust the fade and reveal time, I can make that text fade on in time with my particle stream. It may take some fine tuning, so if I apply it back to the host and it doesn't quite match, I can always go back in and make the necessary adjustments. Now if you remember, I created a slight animation on my lens flare earlier. While I'm going in and adjusting my type on effect, I can also create a quick animation for my text. To do this, I'm going to go and select the positions control and set a keyframe for my text layer's position X. If I set that to linear, I can then scrub forward a bit and create a new keyframe, moving the position X forward slightly. When satisfied, I'll hit apply, and there you go. Okay, there are a couple of final tweaks I want to make to really finish this off. I'm going to go to my effects and presets. In the Lights unit, I'm going to select Raise Puffy and drag that right onto the layer. If I reposition the light source around the middle of my text, I can see that I can create some nice glowing light rays. I can increase the intensity and adjust the ray length so that I get some nice subtle glows. By changing the ray style to fat and the look to extended bloom, the rays will look as if they're coming from the lens flare and wrapping around the text. Now I can change the color to colorize and I can select the preset Cyan's and now my light rays will match the particle stream. Now there's one last thing that I want to do which is completely optional. If I go back to my original particle stream composition, I can select the particle emitter 3D effect in each layer. Remember, there are two, one for the ribbon and one for the spawning particles. If I open up the render group in each, I can enable anti-aliasing and motion blur. Now the higher I increase these settings, the longer my render time will be, but in the end, it'll be well worth the effort. When done, I can go back to my final composition and preview to RAM. And that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care!